What kind of shorts do clouds wear? Thunderbins. Today, I'm going to recap a 2019 action-adventure film called Hobbs and Shaw. A quick warning, there will be major spoiler ahead. London. A team of MI6 agents, led by Hattie Shaw, storm a warehouse to retrieve a deadly virus called the Snowflake. They are found by the super-enhanced Brixton lore. Because of his cybernetic augmentations, he is able to sense incoming attacks, which allows him to wipe the floor with all of the other agents. Hattie injects herself with the snowflake and escapes from Brixton's side. He grabs a radio and makes it seem as though Hattie is a traitor who took the virus for herself. Elsewhere, Luke Hobbs and Deckard Shaw wake up in their own homes. They go out their daily routines before later going to separate nightclubs to beat the crap out of dozens of goons before they each find one to interrogate. Both Hobbs and Shaw have heard about the super virus that has been going around, and they know it has been manufactured by a terrorist group called Edian. Their respective goons fail to give them the info they want, so Hobbs tattoos I love cops on his forehead while Shaw leaves his guy dangling out a window. Hobbs has breakfast in a diner with his daughter Sam when he is visited by an old friend and CIA agent Locke. He informs Hobbs about the snowflake and just how serious of a threat it is. Although reluctant to help, Hobbs agrees to do so. At the same time, Shaw goes to visit his mother Magdalene, aka Queenie, in prison. She tells him about Hattie's predicament and that he should reach out to her, but he doesn't think Hattie wants to see him. After leaving the prison, Sean is approached by Agent Lowe to also go after the Snowflake. This leads Hobbs and Shaw to come face to face once again with Locke and Loeb asking them to work together. Their response? No way. After exchanging insults, the two begrudgingly agree to work together. The other agents track Hattie down for the guys to go after her. While Shaw goes to Hattie's booby-trapped home, Hobbs manages to find her on the streets. She fights Hobbs to get away while Sean is fought by agents trying to track Hattie. He beats them all across the room, while Hobbs manages to gain the upper hand and bring Hattie in. Hattie is taken back to the CIA headquarters for questioning by Hobbs. Shaw shows up and informs Hobbs that she is his sister. She tells him that she is carrying the virus, just before Brixton shows up and attacks. Shaw recognizes him as an old colleague that he supposedly killed years earlier. Brixton attempts to take Hattie with him, by going down the building with a harness but Hobbs and Shaw pursue. Hobbs slides down the harness to get rid of Brixton's goons before giving Hattie a chance to get away. Hobbs fights Brixton, only to discover he is no match for the superhuman. Shaw drives by to pick up Hobbs and Hattie. Brixton chases after them on a motorcycle, but the heroes lose him after he crashes through a bus. The three then see that Edian has manipulated the media into declaring them all fugitives and traitors. Hattie goes off to try and find Professor Andraco, the creator of the Snowflake, and the one who can extract the virus from her. Hobbs shows that he was tracking Andraco before the attack, and they manage to locate him at a newsstand. Brixton returns to Edian's headquarters to get more juiced up. He speaks to Edian's mysterious leader, who knows of both Hobbs and Shaw, and wants Brixton to have them join Edian. The trio talk to Andraco, who says that he developed Snowflake for Edian but he left them after realizing their plan to use it on humanity and then forced them to be fixed by Edian. He tells them that the only way to get it out of Hattie is to kill her or extract it from her through a facility in the Ukraine. Shaw uses some of his own gear to help keep himself, Hattie, and Hobbs from being tracked or recognized. They head to Moscow using fake names, with Hobbs getting Mike Oxmall and almost getting detained for it. While on the plane, Shaw tells Hobbs to back off of Hattie since he can tell that he is attracted to her. Hobbs taunts Shaw with the prospect of him hooking up with his sister, but their bickering wakes up the air marshal Dinkley. He figures that the two are on a mission, and he bemoans his lack of action. Dinkley gives them his card for whenever they need something. In Moscow, the trio visit an old flame of Shaw's, Margarita, a.k.a. Madam M. She provides them with gear that they need to storm the Edian facility. Margarita then takes them to the facility where she makes it look like she is giving Hattie up to Brixton, who is already there after interrogating Andraco. Hobbs and Shaw sneak their way around the place after dropping in from a jet. They encounter armed goons and proceed to pummel all of them in separate halls. They then use the unconscious goons to get inside, where they are greeted by dozens of armed Edian agents. Both of them are captured and strapped to electrical cables for interrogation. Brixton tries to get them to join Edian with each additional shock coming closer to killing them. Hattie sneaks up on Brixton and almost kills him, 
but the gun she's holding requires an identity reader. Hobbs and Shaw get free, fight off more goons, and destroy the facility after retrieving the extraction device. Unfortunately, Brixton snaps in Draco's neck and gets away, and the device gets wrecked. Hobbs then figures out somewhere to lay low. The three travel to Samoa, Hobbs's childhood home, where his estranged family lives. He returns to his mother, Sephina, and brothers Jonah, Mateo, Timo, and Cal, plus his three cousins. Jonah is especially dismayed to see Hobbs after his long absence. However, Sephina knows how urgent it is that the brothers help Hobbs out. They go to arm themselves as they prepare for Brixton and Eddian's goons to arrive but Sephina has gotten rid of all their weapons. The plan then becomes that the family will fight Eddian with their bare hands and wits. Jonah fixes the device to start getting it out of Hattie. Brixton and Eddian are tracked as they make their way to the island. The Hobbs men stand ready for battle. The Eddian goons try to shoot them, but Hattie has disabled their guns. Fists begin to fly, bodies are thrown, and bones are broken as the agents are demolished by the Samoans. Brixton grabs Hattie and starts to escape on helicopter. Hobbs and Shaw ride together while Jonah and the others follow. They hook their vehicles together like a train as Hobbs throws a hook onto the helicopter to bring it down. The helicopter crashes down below. Hobbs and Shaw face off against Brixton while Hattie has all of the snowflake removed from her and she kills Brixton's goon. Realizing he is just going to intercept their every move, Hobbs and Shaw resolve to fight him by having one of them take a hit while the other delivers a hit. This proves effective as it causes Brixton's programming to overload. After witnessing his defeat, the Eddian leader deprograms Brixton's enhancements, and he dies before falling over the edge of the cliff. The Eddian leader then speaks to Hobbs and Shaw, implying that they will see the two of them again. Afterwards, Shaw and Hattie go visit their mother in prison, and leave her a cake that may contain something that will allow her to escape. Meanwhile, Hobbs decides to bring Sam to meet his family, as he has decided to stick around this time. During the credits, Locke contacts Hobbs again as he is fighting with other Eddian agents over another, possibly even more deadly virus. Locke also managed to stab a guy with a brick. In another scene, Hobbs gets Shaw back for the Moscow fake name by having the police get him and address him as Hugh Janus. Shaw steps out but doesn't look like he's going to go quietly. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy hit the like button, and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching.